one of the most expensive sim racing F1 cockpits. And today we're going to talk about it and see if it's actually worth the money. But first, let's build it. So today we're going to talk about Playseat F1 Ultimate Edition, they changed the name but I don't know why and I'm not going to go into that details but specifically we're going to talk about that seat, that uh, sim rig and it's quite interesting comparing to the other F1 seat just because well first of all you have a complete roll bar going around you and it really does look nice and quite interesting but uh, it doesn't have that pole right in the middle of your legs that might get in your way while driving. And I can definitely say that it's much more, I would say, convenient to drive in this seat than the F1 that has that pole uh, that's sticking out and holding your steering wheel and the base. And yeah, it's kind of... I, don't, I wouldn't say it's that convenient to drive it like that. Even though if you really do get used to it, you might find it more convenient First of all, because of the price range and the price difference, because the price tag on that one is 1,100 euros and with uh, some, I would say, discounts, it could go around 900, 999 euros, while this one is 2,600 euros. And on this count, you could manage to grab it for 2,000 euros. But is the price actually worth it? Does it really make it all that fuss with all that money spending on a sim rig and on the chair or basically an F1 sim rig, we have to check that out. But let's first check some details out about it. The key features that uh, the F1 Ultimate Edition gives you uh, is the most realistic and accurate F1 experience while sitting and the exact position that you're sitting just like in an F1 car developed in collaboration uh, with F1 racing teams and drivers. And this one is not a feature, but used by professional drivers and esports athletes like Max Verstappen, uh, Charles Leclerc, Valtteri Bottas and Sebastian Vettel. Uh, adjustable seating position to match an F1 IndyCar Formula 2, 3, 4, Formula Ford, Formula Renault 2.0, Le Mans, LMP1 and more single-seater cars. It's easily adjustable for perfect driving position so you can adjust the pedals, you can adjust the steering wheel, you can adjust the chair, basically everything. 
it, I do have to say it has a superior build quality and stability and comfort. Flex free pedal plate, which is definitely true. And we're talking about more than five millimeter of thick steel that is bolted with uh, loads of screws just to hold it in place. Compatible with loads of uh, steering wheels and pedals like Logitech, Trustmaster, Fnatic and others. Uh, also compatible with direct drive steering wheels like Fanatec, Sim Steering, Huisinkweld, Simucube uh, and others. Then we have product information. So this was developed for 10 years. It comes in variety of cores. You have black, white, red, you have Mercedes, Red Bull, and I'm not sure if you have a Ferrari, but it's not foldable. It doesn't include any of the steering wheels, pedals or uh, base. The weight is 49.5 kilograms and the dimensions, which might be interesting for you guys that want to go into sim racing, want to buy this one, but you are worried about the dimensions. So 168 centimeters times 61.5 times 73.5. Recommended driver's length is minimum from 120 to 230 centimeters and the weight from 20 to 122 kilos. Now I wanted to share my opinion on the F1 Ultimate Edition just because I haven't seen too much reviews or basically any, only some sort of uh, shorts or reels or stuff like that. And uh, I have to say that for 2,600 euros or 2,500 dollars, because the price difference is really strange in uh, US and Europe. And uh, here's the thing. Now you buy, for instance, this seat and First of all, you unbox it and everything and you need to assemble it. Of course, uh, I would suggest going with another person and uh, basically assembling it just because there are a couple of positions on the chair that somebody needs to hold while you tighten the screws. So it aligns perfectly with other parts. So it has a nice, let's say, line with the roll bars. Uh, also, I would say that uh, everything is cool when it comes to uh, possibility to adjust the pedals, possibility to adjust the base, the steering wheel. You have two ways of adjusting it, so that's really cool. And of course, the seat slides front to the back. You can adjust the height of it because, well, after all, it is base for Formula One. But here's the kicker. Now, <laughs> what really gets on my nerves is the slider of the chair that is making such irritating squeaking noises that you have to most likely grease up both rails so it has nice fluidity or I don't know why this happens because it's really strange paying 2,600 euros for this chair and then just getting those squeaky noise. But uh, let's put it aside and let's say that they didn't grease up the rails just because so the grease doesn't fall on the rest rest of the parts of the chair, including the leather, well, basically some sort of a leatherette, which is still quite comfortable. Now, uh, next part is it doesn't have holes in the wheelbase that are dedicated for Moza R5 bundle. Now, of course, you're going to say that that steering wheel, for instance, isn't designed for Formula One. And I do agree on that, of course. First of all, because it's a standard shape steering wheel for standard GT3 or some other racing simulations that would be much more suitable. But <clears throat> I had the opportunity to review that one and I placed it like so. So instead of having two additional holes to mount the R5 from Moza Racing, I had to use their table clips and guess what happened? Of course, they collide and get in the way. So I had three possibilities of adjusting the angle. Basically, the table clips can come in a certain angle and you can't adjust those, unfortunately. But that's going from Moza Racing, the R5 bundle. But then again, you have the possibility to adjust two side plates and the plate that uh, holds the base. And still, I managed to drive it because I'm quite skinny, as I already stated in a couple of videos, and I could manage my feet right next to those locking nuts uh, that hold the base to the plate of the sim rig. So there's that. I would prefer if there were actually holes to adjust the R5 direct drive base, but then again, quite all right, because most of uh, people buying the R5 bundle, since it's more affordable direct drive to the people that are trying to get into the whole scene, won't be buying that seat. Most likely will go with some, let's say, 
PlaySeat Trophy or anything other than the F1 Ultimate Edition. So it's quite interesting when I try to grab a R16 from Moza Racing or anything else and try to place it. Will it have the exact holes? We will see. Of course, they stated Logitech, Fnatic and others which are already pre-designed and the holes are pre-drilled just for those. Uh, also placing the pedals on the pedal plate. I, ha I have to say the chair doesn't have anywhere any flex whatsoever. The chair is fully comfortable you can sit on it you just have to get used to it because after driving for um, let's say two hours you'll get some back pain that's for sure but after a couple of days of driving constantly your back will accommodate to the seating position and basically that's it there's nothing left to say uh, now one thing that really ticked me off with the chair is so 26 i'm going to mention the price again so 26 100 euros and you get the stickers peeled off actually i got one sticker peeled off almost well not entirely but lettering was falling off just by removing it from the box and the foil and everything it looked really hideous and of course i asked for a replacement sticker it's not that it's just a sticker it's a part where you pay a lot of money and you expect it to be perfect right so apart from the holes that are designed that aren't designed for the R5 bundle or let's see for other Moza Racing bases, uh, the squeaky noises coming from the chair and of course the sticker sticking out is quite a disappointment. Then finally the last thing when you tie up the chair to the base of the whole cockpit, uh, what happens is you have a certain leatherette part that you're placing over the screws where you tie up the chair to the base. And it doesn't fit perfectly. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit perfectly. But when you sit on it, you don't have any issues or uncomfortable seating positions or anything else. It just looks a bit strange because it doesn't fit perfectly on those uh, threads, on those uh, screws and everything else. So. What I could say about this chair, you're paying quite a lot of money for something that is supposed to be an ultimate F1 experience. And I have to say, I have no doubts about it and I can't deny that. It really is. You're sitting in an exact position as an F1 driver. You just need a proper steering, steering wheel and base so you don't have extra clips going in the way of your legs. The, the whole roll bar, the whole cage of the cockpit looks outstanding and that's perfect. All the other stickers except for the one at the back of the seat are perfectly placed and there is no actually tearing or anything in that sense. And I would say that the packages arrived without any scratches on the other side. So I would say that the manufacturing process of placing the sticker is the issue that happened. But uh, finally, the squeaky noises, I haven't greased up and I'm not going to grease up the rails just because I have the Excel uh, mat from Placey that's right beneath and I don't want to risk uh, the grease falling down on that mat and I have to clean it and stuff like that. I know it's a bit, you know, you're complaining, but yet you don't want to do it and stuff like that. So uh, it's something that uh, you could live with it. I would say but each time you move your chair and each time you want to get in or get out of the chair it really does kind of get irritating especially for those people who actually can't stand the sound so yeah so all together an outstanding experience I do have to admit really loving the F1 driving and all the positions as it's really outstanding but these three things kind of do trigger a bit and especially for the price if the standard price was 2000 euros and the discount goes to 1500 i would say best buy for the f1 ultimate experience not because of the name f1 ultimate edition but really is and it really does look nice the cool thing what i was i have to add one more thing the one thing that i was really worried about when i assembled the chair and when i wanted to place it on my flooring Will it damage it? Of course it won't because what they did is on the key parts of the chair they placed some rubber pads that are really thick and first of all they hold the chair on the 
position where it's supposed to be, where you place it, of course. But they also protect the flooring. So when you move the chair, if you have to move it by yourself, not raise it up and carry it with another person, uh, it won't damage your flooring. So there's that. But then again, you can always buy the Excel mat from Playseat, which uh, actually gives you a possibility to move the chair quite easily without even thinking of damaging the flooring. So if you're willing to spend 2,600 euros or 2,500 dollars on the Formula One experience, you're good to go. I would suggest for you to wait on some discounts when it's lower to 2,000 euros or I've, I don't think it goes below 2,000 dollars as well. But other than that, yeah, just wait for the discounts and maybe if you want to risk it, grease up those rails. Uh, if they don't damage the locking mechanism when you, for instance, when you're driving and you pr press the throttle and the brakes so it doesn't push back and basically destroys the mechanism. I didn't try it and I'm not going to try it, I'm going to leave it squeaking all the time. So there's that. So just a bit of an overview. It's, it could be a review, I would say. But giving you some insights about the Placeit F1 Ultimate experience, it could have been done better. And of course, as I already stated, I would definitely suggest two person building this just to hold both rails together and the second person can then tie up the screws so the rails can go next to each other perfectly without any problems. That's it guys. Thank you for watching today's video. In any case, if you decide to actually buy it, I'll just place the link below for you. Maybe you get some more information from other reviews, if you could find any, or other sources like Reddit or Amazon reviews or stuff like that. And finally, if you like the video and if you're really excited about checking out future sim racing content, which will definitely be either on this or maybe a second channel, yeah, that's going to most likely happen. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.